this week. I had it made. I was living in Wellfleet on the Cape. I have a great family and a bunch of friends. I was well-traveled and I was opening my third business and it was July, so it was jamming down there on the Cape. And the next thing I know, I am in a rehabilitation hospital in Boston. When my friends and family came to visit, I asked them, what happened? I said, Tracy, three months ago, you were in a car accident. I said, what happened? And they told me I had left my shop. I was following my friend to her house and on Route 6. She took a left off the highway, and while I was waiting for clearance, I was hit from behind. And because my legs weren't on the brake and my wheels were turned, I was pushed into that oncoming traffic and hit again. So when rescue did come over to my car, they found me in the back seat. And my friends were telling me this. They said, Tracy, you always wore your seatbelt. You always had us, if you were driving with us, put your seatbelt on, gotta have it. And because you were found in the back seat, you did not have that on. So life has been quite difficult. I was suffering with a spinal cord injury, and because I was in a coma for a month, I have a traumatic brain injury, which is a big time bummer. I've had 12 years now of physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, working on my memory, the short term memory, big time. So, did all that memory, that's pretty good. So what I finished, what, I'm, what I wrote to finish up is, so gentlemen, because I did not buckle up one time for no unanswered reason, I was driving two miles down the road. I now have the experience of being a friggin' quadriplegic. I am suffering, like I said, from both a spinal cord injury and a traumatic brain injury, which sucks big time. I do not need to express how I would have given anything to have simply put my seatbelt on that day in July, 12 years ago. Because having that seatbelt on would have obviously prevented me from being thrown to the back seat of my automobile, which for certain I would not either have a broken neck or an injured brain. But I most definitely am here to say you will be doing a great service informing all others, like they have not already heard, how wearing a seatbelt would, like me, prevent them from having to maneuver for the rest of their life with the use of a wheelchair, or need assistance with living. For instance, need help showering, dressing, cooking, getting into and out of bed, which includes putting two ham braces on straight my fingers and a leg brace, food shopping, ordering, and also taking my drugs, which I've taken quite a few of, transportation for all my appointments, which are quite a few, in order for me to travel and see the world, I have to have that assistance. 
And that's if even they do survive an unplanned event. So that's what I have to say. I uh, have a quick poem that I wrote. I'm not going to do it from memory, you know, I can. I wrote, it's called Wheeling Through Life. It's not the strength I need for turning the wheels. The force lives in the inner power of knowing just how I feel and the unending determination within my soul is truly vital for all to reach the goal. So what I have found day to day is to choose the joy that yearns to come out and play. So ride with pride and I'll treat myself best. And no matter what, I won't be like the rest. 